Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In. I'm a crackhead update. Uh, I went to Atlanta yesterday. I just made it back about 7 o'clock last night. Well, anyway, we was at this large mall, me and my old lady. And she was over there looking at some stuff. And this motherfucker walked up to me. He said, hey, cat daddy. I look at this motherfucker, got a wig and all that shit on. I said, man, this ain't no fucking woman, man. I said, say, man, I'm not in the mud pushing. He said, no, I'm just, I just go for a hundred. I'm trying to make a hundred dollars real fast. So I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't mud push. I said, I got an old lady right over there. I, don't, I, don't, I ain't got no use for you. Oh, I, baby, I can make you feel young again. I said, listen at this real close. I said, listen at what I'm fixing to say. Bold pussy is better than no pussy. But I'll wait until I get some more pussy. Now you figure that out. He said, you talk strange, where you from? I said, don't even worry about all that. I'm through talking to you. Before I have to pull my goddamn shank out, you better get it. And that was the end of our little interlude. Boy, they got so many of them motherfuckers in there now. It's a goddamn shame. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your motherfucking shanks out. And let's get ready to ride. Yeah, my recent trip to Atlanta was fruitful. Man, it's short, but that was a business trip. I took my old lady with me. She needed to get out and move around a little bit. Uh, yeah, I've been hearing lately uh, a lot of YouTubers saying that, uh, being poor is a choice. I don't know how the fuck you can wrap your head around that. You take a poor kid that's born in the inner city, born in the poverty, or just above the poverty line, uneducated parents, all he'll see is whores, drug addicts, dope pushers, gang bangers. This is what he see every day, going to school, he don't have no positive influence in his life. When he born at the county hospital, he born through charity. His mama immediately gonna go get him an EBT card. A little baby already got a food stamp card. He ain't got no choice in that whatsoever. He don't have no one to mentor him so he can uh, think beyond his environment. If you raise up in that environment, it's very few people escape that environment and he end up being successful. It's a few success stories come out of that. Well, look at how many failures. I can go to South Dallas now. Some people I know, they still there right now. They ain't never made it out of South Dallas. Now, I don't know how in the hell that's a choice. You ain't going to be able to figure things out until you get older. Sometimes it'd be too damn late. You got poor schools, and then if this kid don't play sports, uh, he uh, a musician or something where he can escape the inner city, how in the fuck is he going to be, is this his choice? When we got all these fucking parents that's contributing to a generational poverty, not generational wealth, but poverty. Now how in the fuck is that a choice? You don't have no choice in that whatsoever. Now, once you attain a certain age, sure, you should be able to learn some things during the course of living where you can escape that environment. But it, all that takes time. And everybody is not able to do it. So I don't know how the hell that's being poor by choice. That's bullshit. I imagine most people with any type of logic want their kids to have more than what they had. They don't want no kid being born poor, got to struggle. Every fucking thing he get is through government doors. Section 8 housing, EBT, WIC, everything, everything is through the government. So how in the hell is that a choice? I, I see some kids, man, they parents are so ignorant, I feel sorry for the little kid. They didn't ask to be born. You brought those kids into that horrible environment. You know damn well you can't support them. You know you can't do it. You can't even support your damn self. 
you know, like, you know, you need to modify when you say that uh, a person is poor by choice. Now, once you, as an adult, now I can understand you saying that, but a kid coming up, man, how in the hell are they going to escape it? Some people get so in, uh, brainwashed and ingrained in their environment, hell, they can't never escape it. That's why the prison is full of poor people. It ain't full of wealthy people. All of 85% of the guys there come from low-income families. Why the hell you think they get so much time? They don't have money and shit to hire no fucking attorney. Guy got an attorney, shit, he don't get that kind of time. Look at all the wealthy people who commit these horrible crimes. Hell, they don't be getting life without parole. They may get sent to prison, but it's some sentence that's doable, or at least he'll get out and still have some life in him. The sentences they give out in Texas, shit, when you leave that prison, you're going to be an old motherfucker if it's a crime of violence. It's a wrap for you. Oh, that's my little two cents in on the whip. I, I could go further, but I got to run some errors today. Uh, yeah, once at the Ramsey unit, we had a guy come and uh, he was an albino. Man, there's no fucking way in the world he's supposed to put this poor guy out in the fields in that hot ass fucking sun because he's visually impaired. He had the dark glasses on. They put him out in the fields. Because back then, there ain't no shit. Uh, they, the way they looked at it, depends on your age. If you were below 45 and below, your ass was qualified for field work. They didn't give a fuck about what else is wrong with you. And especially were hard for you if you did not have no family and no outside help. You was really royally fucked. Now, if you had outside help, you could move mountains. Because boys like Wildcat, they didn't want adverse publicity. No bad publicity. They didn't want that. So you could get things did. Well, anyway, they put this guy out. We had, you know, he was an easygoing guy. He could tell he was real educated. He had 15 years for killing his wife. I could tell he'd been to college. He was smart. But, you know, Cat probably would have gave him a job later on in one of the departments. But their policy back then was you had to earn your way into that job. You had to go to the fields first. Almost every inmate went to the fields. So anyway, we had laced this guy up on how to deal with old Lord. I was looking at him. I can tell he's going to have a hard time with old Lord. Old Lord ain't seen no strange looking dude like this got blonde hair and saying he's a black dude. And he looks straight up like a white man got blue eyes. Looked like a straight white man. But he say he's black. He's albino. So we turn out for work. As we was going out the gate, as Red Rider counters out the gate, we go out in Paris. I seen how old Lord was looking. Like I keep saying, God damn, what they didn't put this strange looking motherfucker in one hole. So he don't say nothing. When we get off the trailers and get ready to go to work, old Lord called him over to the side. He said, God damn, nigga. What kind of goddamn nigga is you? He said, Oh, Lord, I'm an albino. He said, albino, nigga, I ain't never heard no goddamn albino. He said, half of you is black and half of you is white. But they say you're a black man, but you look like a goddamn white man. And you talk like a white man. He said, you're going to have a hard time, one ho. You, these these are hard, hard third bad niggas here. These 100% niggas here. And, and they don't even talk like you. And you better be able to work because you don't look like you're motivated. I can get you motivated. I put this goddamn whoop on your ass. You'll get motivated. He said, uh, oh, Lord, I'm fish. I told him how to talk to him. Stand there. And talk to him. Don't stare him down. Look off when you, he don't like you staring at him. I told him, man, just look off and talk. No matter what the fuck he say, don't raise your voice. Make all them wild ass hand movements. Stand there and tell the man what your situation is. And he told him, he said, oh, Lord, I mean, I, I suffer from albinism and I got bad eyes, eyesight. He say, this son killing me. I can't see nothing out here. He said, God damn, them dark ass glasses on you still can't see? He said, no, sir, I can't see. He said, I can't see a goddamn thing. So he don't know what the fuck to do with him. He ain't never seen no guy like this. So he called me and said, Major, Major, get over here and get this strange ass nigga. I got a strange ass nigga from outer space over here in my goddamn squad. 
So Red Rider ride up. He said, Major, this nigga say he can't see. Red Rider, even though he the Major, he run everything. He kind of handled things different than all the rest of them. That's why when they fired all them fucking old hard prison guards and wards, Red Rider stayed around. He ended up making war. He didn't get fired. He was sorry up to an extent because you had to be back then. But a lot of unnecessary bullshit, he didn't do. Just beat you down for no reason, he'll stop the shit. I've seen him do it a whole lot of times. That's enough to leave that goddamn inmate alone. I've seen him do it a lot of times. So uh, Red Rider said, you can't see? He said, no, sir, I can't see. So he said, God damn. He said, Stack, come on over here and sit down. He got on the phone. He, he got on his walkie-talkie he called Cat. Cat came out there. They don't know what to do with this guy. So uh, that was on a Thursday. They gave him a lay-in. That means you don't go to work that Friday. With that uh, Saturday, we don't go to work. Sunday, he get a visit. Now, this dude had outside help. He wasn't from no fucking poor-ass family. He told his family what was going on. That Monday morning, U.S. Marshals was there. Cat don't want to see no shit like that. That Tuesday morning, his ass was on a chain being transferred to the wind unit. He got him to, because he didn't want no inmates at that prison who could not perform field work. He didn't have no fucking use for you. That's why so many guys played crazy and all that other shit to get their ass out of that hard-ass field work. At least get sent to another prison that don't work as hard as Ramsey do. All the Texas prisons back then worked, but some worked super hard. And this was one of them hard working fucking plantations. Your ass was going to work there. I got to run some errors. I got to run the Oak Cliff. I got a package coming from Amazon. Everything is closing in on me at the same time. So uh, y'all keep your motherfucking shanks ready because it's holiday season. I'm glad to be back in the beautiful city of Dallas. It's 78 degrees outside, sun shining, looking good as hell. Y'all support me over on Patreon. Like and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.